Hello and welcome to Paris. This week we are exploring the city of love, city of lights, and city of art. This video will be showing you the top 50 things to do here. Earlier this summer we spent a whole 10 days in Paris and we decided we wanted to highlight some of the best attractions and activities around the city. Over the course of our visit we came up with 50 things to do in Paris, but of course there are plenty more things you could experience here. We hope this guide will help you plan your trip to Paris and let us know if there's anything else you would add to this list. Now let's get started. So we are now standing in front of a landmark that needs no introduction. This is one of the most recognized sites in all of Paris and all of France really. So I present to you the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was designed for the 1889 World Fair, and while people hated it at the time, we couldn't imagine Paris without it today. Champ de Mars is a large public green space right in front of the Eiffel Tower and it's where people go to get those postcard perfect shots. Today is our first day exploring Paris and we thought we'd sample a bit of the local cuisine. We came across a little stand that was selling crepes, so I ordered one with jambon et fromage. So this one is ham and cheese. It looks delicious. We've been walking around for hours and I'm starving, so so excited to just bite into this. absolutely have to do while in Paris is try crepes with Nutella. Notre Dame is the most visited church in all of Paris and it's a great example of French Gothic architecture. Don't forget to set foot inside for a glimpse at the spectacular rose window. The Arc de Triomphe honors those who fought and died for France in the French Revolutionary and the Napoleonic Wars. Underneath the vault you'll find the tomb of the unknown soldier with an eternal flame that commemorates the dead who were never identified during the World Wars. So we are now going for a stroll down the Champs Elysees, an avenue that's known for its luxury and opulence. You can buy all sorts of things here. We've seen luxury cars, luxury handbags, jewelry. And yeah, it's also a great place to people watch with lots of little cafes. So today we are having a nice little picnic in the outskirts of Paris. We just felt like we needed to get out of the city for a bit. So we went to a grocery store, we picked up a few snacks and now we're in the Bois de Boulogne and we're going to be having a nice little picnic outside and it's a great day for it. So I'm excited to dig into all this food. Ooh la la! Ooh la la, oui. Bois de Boulogne is the second largest park in Paris. It was once part of the hunting grounds for the French monarchy, but these days you're more likely to find people jogging, rowing, and enjoying picnics. On a boat, on the lake, in the Bois de Boulogne, and Sam is going to row me around for a whole hour, yeah! So this one is for those of you who have a major sweet tooth. When you come to Paris, you have to try the macaron. And we've picked up a cute little box from a little patisserie. And they look so nice. I almost don't even want to eat them, but we're going to be sampling them. up on these and they are made with egg whites, icing sugar, regular sugar and then some almond powder. 
and they also use a little bit of food coloring to give them different colors so as you can see here we've got four different variations with four different flavors Though technically not in Paris, Versailles is a short train ride away. We ended up joining a biking tour and our first stop was the Versailles market to pick up a few picnic items. Once in Versailles, we dove into Marie Antoinette's world with a visit to the Queen's Hamlet. So just now we are visiting the Petit Trianon and this would have been kind of like a make-believe village where Marie Antoinette could escape the palace and just leave everything behind. No one actually lived in these homes but she would hire peasants to just come around and pretend like they were going about their daily routine just so she could have some company but not have people stare at her. So it's kind of like an artificial village and it's really weird but really pretty at the same time. After biking down the boulevards and picnicking along the shores of the Grand Canal, our day concluded with a visit inside the Versailles Palace. So another fun thing to do in Paris if you're here during the summer months is to head down to the banks of the Seine where there's lots of different dance parties taking place. As you can see behind me there's a few different circles, lots of Latin music playing and everyone's having a great time. I think it's like 11 p.m. and the party's still going. It's just getting started. <laughs> how much longer the railings can hold on but if you do happen to visit Paris with a loved one you can always lock your love this reminds me of our time in Korea when we locked our love on top of Seoul Tower <laughs> visiting the neighborhood of Montmartre and one of the main attractions here is the church Sacré-Cœur and there's the option of climbing up to the dome where you get some really great views of the city. So that's what we're doing right now, 300 steps to the top. I'm already a little bit out of breath and we've only just begun. Lead the way! <laughs> Aside from climbing the dome of Sacré-Cœur, you can also visit the interior. The basilica has the unique distinction of sitting atop the highest point in the city. We're going to be having something called Coq Monsieur. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. So as you can see over here, the Coq Monsieur looks a lot like a grilled cheese sandwich. So it's just two slices of bread, ham and cheese in the middle, you can also have bechamel sauce and then there's more cheese over top and that's been grilled and melted and it looks ooey and gooey. So I'm gonna let Sam take the first bite because I'm always eating the food first. So, you yeah. sure are. Here you go. Wow, is that ever good? Basically, my best way of explaining this is if you've ever had a grilled cheese before, this is like a premier grilled cheese. It has an extra layer of cheese on top, plus you get the ham in the middle. And I just love how I think they put a lot of maybe butter on the bread or on the toast, and it just gives it that, <laughs> that greasiness that makes it so tasty. <laughs> Well, well, it is time for another French dessert. So today we are introducing you to the eclair. And I have two eclairs in here that I just picked up from a little bakery shop. And it's time for the unveiling. All right, so I went for the classic chocolate topped eclair. So basically it's just a long doughy pastry and the inside is supposedly filled with cream 
and it has chocolate icing on top. But let's bite in to make sure. Quality control over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. mm. How is that? Absolutely. Mine's not cream. It has like a, a creamy chocolate pudding in the middle and chocolate icing on top. Ooh, it's almost like a filled churro. Mm -hmm. And the taste? Yeah, it's it's delicious. It's amazing. And I mean the the pastry, it's almost like a puff pastry. It's very light and it's hollow inside, so then they just fill it. Is it overly so it's, sweet? It's not overly sweet. It's more creamy than anything. It's like pudding. Mm. That is really good. Surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. Originally built as a church, the Pantheon was eventually turned into a mausoleum for Frenchmen who sacrificed their lives for their country. Right now we're visiting Père Lachaise, which is Paris' largest gravesite, and it's the final resting place of some pretty famous people, including Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison. So does this place remind you of anywhere? It actually does. When I was in Buenos Aires, it reminds me a lot of a place called Recoleta. And I have to say, along with that, this is the most impressive cemetery I've ever visited. We have now arrived at the Tuileries Garden and it's starting to get a little bit dark, so it might be a little hard to appreciate, but I assure you, it's really pretty in the daytime. So now let's continue on towards the Louvre. Tuileries Garden is a public garden located between the Louvre Museum and the Place de la Concorde. Grab one of the free chairs around the water fountains and enjoy the views. Behind me is the Louvre, one of the most famous attractions in all of Paris. The Louvre is the most visited museum in the world. They say that if you were to admire every piece of artwork, you'd be there for months. One great way to experience Paris is by taking a boat tour. The bateaux mouches are open excursion boats that allow you to soak in the sights while you float down the river Seine. Alternatively, you could rent a bicycle and pedal your way across the city. Paris has the Vélib, which is a large-scale public bicycle sharing system. Or you can see Paris by Segway. The plant garden is a large botanical garden in the city, and within its grounds you'll also find the National Museum of Natural History. The Pompidou Centre is a multicultural complex for the arts and culture. The unique architecture is worth a visit even if you only admire it from the outside. Le Marais was once the French nobility's favorite place of residence, but we went there in search of street art, and there was lots to see. There are lots of celebrations throughout the year, and we just happened to be in town for Bastille Day. Check your calendar before you visit and see if there are any special holidays coming up. So we are now visiting the Luxembourg Gardens, which are probably some of my favorite gardens in the whole city. It's a great place to relax, come have a picnic, visit the palace, or just enjoy the gardens. Luxembourg Palace was once a royal residence, but today it is home to the French Senate. visiting a place that's called Les Invalides and this used to be an old hospital and retirement home for war veterans. These days it's more of a military museum that you can visit and it also holds the remains of Napoleon Bonaparte. The Petit and Grand Palais are right across from each other. The Petit Palais houses a fine arts museum and the Grand Palais hosts numerous changing exhibitions.
An alternative way to experience Paris is in a romantic car ride in a De Chaveau. Saint-Chapelle is a medieval Gothic chapel. The lines were too long for us to go in, but it has one of the most impressive collections of stained glass in the world. If you want to see the Eiffel Tower from a different vantage point than Champ de Mars, Trocadero is an alternative. I'm visiting Parc de Prince Stadium, home of Paris Saint-Germain Football Club, and if you're a football fan, this is where you want to come. The Moulin Rouge is one of the most famed cabarets in Paris and the birthplace of the Can-Can dance. You'll want to secure a ticket well in advance because this place is popular. Next up, we visited the Montmartre Cemetery, which is the final resting place of many famous artists who lived and worked in this area. Moulin de la Galette is a former windmill turned restaurant, and it earns a spot on this list because it was painted by many artists, including Renoir. Le Consulat is a little restaurant in Montmartre. It has been featured in many films and is a great place to people watch. There is also a museum in the area, the Montmartre Museum, which contains paintings, photographs and posters that depict the history of the neighborhood. So you can't come to Paris and not try all the delicious pastries they have in store. So today I have picked myself up one of these. This is called Millefeuille, which means thousand leaf. And that's just because you can see all the different layers of dough. They're super thin. Um, and it looks like this has some kind of custard filling and it may on top. Let's dig in. Oh, crunchy. Mm. That was a horrible bite. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite desserts I've been picking up from the patisseries here in Paris have been these awesome tarts. This one here is a lemon tart and it is my favorite. Let's have a look. Ooh la la. Galerie Lafayette is a huge department store carrying high-end brands. The interior is beautiful, but unfortunately, we made the mistake of visiting on a Sunday when it was closed. This unusual building is La Madeleine. It was meant to be a temple to glorify Napoleon's army, but halfway through, construction plans changed and it became a church. Our preferred method of getting around in Paris is definitely by metro. There's a really intricate network of different lines. And to save money, you can get a pack of 10 tickets and it'll save you several euros. It's definitely the way to go. The metro encompasses five zones, but we found that we stayed within zone one the whole time we were in Paris. Keep this in mind when purchasing your metro tickets. So we're wrapping things up here. What would be your one tip for visiting Paris? Well, having recently spent a whole 10 days here in the middle of summer, I would say that if you really want to visit the art galleries, the museums, and all the main attractions, you should probably avoid summer and like either come in the spring or the fall or even winter because the lines are insane and sometimes you have to wait like an hour and a half or two hours just to go inside a museum or go inside a church and you just kill a lot of time. So that's my one tip, try and avoid summer when the crowds are just everywhere and it's also a bit too hot in my opinion. but. That's just me. So how about you? What are your final thoughts on Paris? So my final thoughts is obviously Paris is one of the top cities in the world in terms of attractions, but it is like any other big gritty city and you have to come in with realistic expectations. There is gonna be garbage, there is gonna be lines, there is gonna be some areas that are a bit of an eyesore, but there's also a lot of beauty and there's also a lot to do here. So I highly recommend coming, but just don't have Paris on such a high pedestal that you're gonna be disappointed. And that concludes our guide of the top 50 things to do and see in Paris. We hope you enjoyed watching and let us know if there are any other places you would add to this list. For more city guides and food videos around the world, don't forget to hit subscribe. <laughs>